This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In this section, I'm going to talk about some aspects of the C++ standard library. The C++ standard library provides a huge amount of functionality and the standard library uses the std namespace, so all of the identifiers in the standard library are using this namespace in order to avoid naming conflicts with other code. And I highly recommend that you get well acquainted with the functionality that's in the standard library so that you can avoid writing code unnecessarily. In other words, if there is some functionality in the standard library to achieve what it is you want to achieve, why bother writing your own code when you can just use what's in the standard library and save time with testing, debugging, and, and so on. The functionality in the standard library can be partitioned into a number of sub-libraries or sub-components, which I've listed on this slide. The first is the language support library, which provides some basic core level support, which relates to language features like exceptions and memory management. The diagnostic library provides functionality that's useful for debugging. Things like the assert macro, for example, would fall into this category. The general utilities library provides a number of different general purpose uh, utilities such as functors that are useful in a number of different places in the standard library. The strings library provides support for C++ style strings, in other words the string class in the standard library, as well as C style strings, in other words strings that are null terminated character arrays. The localization library provides functionality that relates to where you happen to live in the world. In different parts of the world currency is represented differently you know, pound sign versus dollar sign. Uh, date and time is formatted differently or parsed differently depending on where in the world you might happen to live. The localization library helps you to deal with these sorts of issues. The containers library provides a number of different containers which are collections of elements, you know, things like a vector. You can have a collection of elements stored in a vector or a collection of characters stored in a string in a standard library. String and vector are examples of containers the iterators library, which provides functionality that relates to iterators. Uh, the algorithms library which provides a number of different generic algorithms, things for searching, sorting, merging, uh, finding the minimum and maximum elements in a set of elements, and so on. Uh, the numerics library provides complex numbers and math functions. The input output library provides I.O. streams and functionality related to that. The regular expressions library provides functionality that relates to searching for patterns in strings. The Atomic Operations Library is used for multi-threaded programming where you need to have atomic memory operations. And the Thread Support Library is used for multi-threaded applications as well to be able to do things like create threads and mutexes and condition variables and futures and promises and other things like this. On this slide and the next few slides, I've listed some of the commonly used header files associated with the C++ standard library. This list isn't intended to be exhaustive, but just to give you an idea of some of the header files that you're likely to use when you're using the standard library. So from the language support portion of the library, there's the header file cstudlib. This has some declarations and definitions related to runtime support, in particular the exit function, which allows you to terminate a program as declared in this header file. The limits header file is very useful for finding properties of fundamental types. For example, if you want to find out what's the minimum or maximum value that an int or an unsigned long or a float can have, this uh, functionality can be accessed through this header file. The exception header file has some stuff related to exception handling. Um, the initializer list defines the initializer list class template, which is useful for passing parameters in, particularly to constructors. In the diagnostic section of the library, there's the cassert header file, which defines the assert macro. This is very useful for debugging and testing purposes. Uh, std accept has some predefined exception types, types um, defined in it in case you might want to use them. In the general utilities section of the library, we have the header file utility, which has some basic function and class templates, things like swap for swapping elements. In the memory header file, we have things that relate to memory management, things like smart pointer types like unique putter, shared putter. In the functional header file, many different functors, which are very useful, like less and greater. Uh, the type traits header file has a number of, uh, well, type traits, for lack of anything better to call them. 
uh, for checking to see whether or not types have certain properties, like for example, a test to see if a type is an integral type or if it's a reference type and so on. The chrono header file is used for timing. It has access to, provides access to uh, various different clocks that can be used for timing code. In the string section of the library, there's the header file string, which provides a number of different uh, declarations and definitions that relate to the string class in the standard library. The C string header file, which has declarations and definitions which relate to C style strings, similar to what's in the string.h header file in the C programming language. The CC type header file has um, functionality which relates to character classification. For example, checking to see if a character is a digit or it's an alphabetic character and so on. This slide has a summary of some of the header files used in the containers, iterators, and algorithms sections of the library. The first few header files listed here are array, vector, geq, list, set, map, unordered set, unordered map. These all define class templates for various different container types. Um, this header file has the, the, the array class template, which is a fixed size array. The vector class template is a dynamically resizable array. geq, which is double-ended queue. List, which is a doubly linked list. Um, some set classes like set and multi-set are basically a, a set of elements that are ordered by uh, a set of keys, I should say, that are ordered by the key value. Uh, map classes like map and multi-map, these are pairs of keys and values sorted by the keys. Uh, we have unordered set classes like unordered set, unordered multi-set. These are similar to sets except there's no order on the elements in the set. And similarly, we have unordered map classes which are similar to the map classes except there's no ordering imposed on the particular elements in the set. Then we have the header file iterator, which defines some things related to iterators, not surprisingly. Uh, for example, the reverse iterator adapter, which allows you to take some iterator and then from it generate a reverse iterator version of the iterator, one that will iterate over things backwards. Um, there's the header file algorithm, has a whole bunch of algorithms in it, for example, sort and min and max and so on. On this slide, I have a list of some of the header files associated with the numerics portion of the standard library. The first header file listed is CMath. It has a bunch of declarations and definitions related to mathematical functions like sine and cos. On POSIX compliant systems, it defines m underscore pi as the mathematical constant pi. The next header file, complex, has a definition of the complex class template, a template in the standard library for complex numbers. The header file random has a lot of different functionality for random number generation. A lot of different distributions can be generated using the, the code which is declared or defined in this header file. The first of the two tables on this slide lists some of the header files associated with the I.O. portion of the standard library. So the first of the header files listed is I.O. stream, which has a bunch of declarations and definitions related to I.O. stream objects. Things like declarations of C.in, C.out, C.air, the, the standard error streams. The iStream header file has definitions and declarations related to input streams, like the definition of the iStream type. The OStream header file has declarations and definitions related to output streams, like the OStream type. Uh, the fStream header file has declarations and definitions related to file streams. File streams are just uh, streams that basically have as their underlying data source or sync a file. So basically they're reading and writing from files. And in particular, this header file has a definition of the fStream type. Um, the fstream header file has declarations and definitions that relate to string streams, in other words, the string stream type. A string stream is a, an I.O. stream that basically reads and writes from an underlying buffer in memory, essentially a string in memory. The header file I.O. manip defines a number of different I.O. manipulators, like set w to set the field width, for example. Then in the second table here, I've listed some of the header files, or the one header file associated with the regular expressions portion of the standard library. The header file is called regexp. And again, regular expressions is, is basically pattern matching functionality if you're trying to search for patterns in strings. On this slide, I've listed some of the header files associated with the atomic operations and thread support portions of the standard library. These header files are useful if you're doing multi-threaded programming. So the first header file listed atomic has some, some uh, definitions and declarations that relate to atomics, for example, the atomic type. These are for atomic memory operations. The header file thread has some definitions which relate to threads, for example, the thread type from the standard library. 
The header file mutex has some definitions and declarations related to mutexes. For example, it defines the mutex type, recursive mutex type, time mutex type, and so on. The header file condition variable has information related to condition variables, for example, the condition variable type in the standard library. And the header file future has some information related to futures, like definitions of the type future, shared future, promise, and so on. Again, these header files are useful if you're doing multi-threaded programming.